So I've showed you how to make a deep house bass in citrus. I've showed you how to make an 808 in citrus. I've showed you how to make a growl bass in citrus. And I've even showed you some sound design tips on how you can make basically any bass you want inside citrus. But the one bass I have not showed you how to make is the Reese bass, AKA Moody Slider bass. And if you're curious, here's a couple examples of what we're gonna be making in today's tutorial. What's up my producer friends? I'm David with anothermonsterproductions.com. So it's been a while since I've done any sort of citrus sound design tutorials. Obviously that's what we're gonna be doing today. If you're new to the channel, I do have a lot of other citrus sound design tutorials which you can check out. And I also have a lot of other FL Studio tutorials as well. If you don't know, Citrus is a stock FL Studio plugin that comes with all versions of FL Studio from the producer edition onward. So as long as you have at least the producer edition of FL Studio, you'll be able to follow along with everything in the tutorial and you'll be able to use citrus fully. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is go up here to where it says add. We're gonna scroll down to where we find citrus and we can add that onto our project. And we're gonna start from scratch. So let's get a blank slate. We'll go up here to this button, plugin options, and we'll go down to presets and then we'll go to the top where it says default. Go ahead and click that. So I went ahead and loaded up a span just so you have some visual feedback as to what's going on in the frequency content as we kind of make this sound. Now, by default, you should have a sine wave, which is sound and look like this. Let's go ahead and go into our operator one. Over here, you see the waveform. We can go ahead and right click this and we can go to sawtooth. Uh, so we have a sawtooth wave, which should look and sound like this. So now we can see we have a ton of different harmonics here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the ratio right here and bring this down to one. So that'll bring it down an octave for us. And while I'm in operator one, I'm gonna route this sound through filter one. So in order to do that, we have to go into our matrix section. I can go ahead and get rid of out. So I can just hit alt, click that, and it'll go back to zero. And then down here, I can take it out at that point. This is filter one here. And then I can bring up filter one here, which is gonna be our operator one, which is what we just added the sawtooth wave on. So now if I play something, you can see we're starting to get some filter there. So if I go into my filter tab, I can actually change the filter type. So I can scroll through to a LP, which is a low pass filter. And this is ultimately what I wanna use and then over here, we have a few different types. So I'd recommend experimenting with some of these different filter types. I'm gonna go ahead and go to X2 for now. And then we can put the HQ on if we want. What that means is that basically there's not gonna be any aliasing. It's gonna have a filter built in. So it's not gonna be quite as harsh to listen to. So you can kind of hear the difference there. So now let's go into my main tab. And basically what creates the re-space sound is two saw waves, slightly detuned, which essentially the phase is canceling out, which creates this sort of wobbly sound. So that's what creates the re-space characteristic that is sort of the stereotypical re-space. So right here where it says ORD, we're gonna bring this up to two. That's two voices but we need to change some of these settings. So here where it says phase, I wanna bring this up to 100%. This is basically randomizing the phase so that it doesn't sound quite so uh, clicky when it hits. It has more of a random, smoother uh, attack. And then let's go over here to where it says pitch, and we'll go ahead and bring this up a little bit until we get sort of a, a little bit more detune. And then the next thing that I wanna do here is go to where it says pitch. I'm just gonna bring this all the way down. So minus 24 semitones is the same as two octaves. So now we have that really dirty sounding grease bass. Now, another big characteristic of this bass sound is the portamento effect or the slidey effect. So if I click this icon here and actually go into our miscellaneous functions tab, I can click Porta and I can click Mono, and then I can adjust the slide feature here. So now we have this slide and I can do more or less depending on what I want. So 
So anyway, you can adjust that to your liking. I'm gonna leave this probably around here for now. Now let's go back into our main tab. I can get rid of that for now. And now we can go into our filter and I can adjust the cutoff. And you can automate the cutoff. You could play with this a little bit if you wanted to. Another thing that we can do is we can go back into our operator one and we can go into our volume envelope, go ahead and enable this. And we can do a slight delay here just so it's not quite as abrupt of a hit of an attack. So if there's any clicking or anything going on, this will eliminate that. And you know, depending on how, uh, how far back you drag this will control the attack. So it kind of gives it more of a swell. So something like that sounds pretty good to me. So from here, we have a lot of different options. We have a lot of things that we can experiment with. And within Citrus, we do have a couple effects that we can mess with. If I were to just bring the effects up here, it's going to automatically add a chorus effect. So that can be something worth experimenting with. Another thing we can do is go back into our main tab. I can change the, pit, the uh, detune amount with this here, the pitch knob. So we don't have to go quite as detuned as I did initially. I can also add more voices. So instead of doing it with the chorus effect, we could add more voices this way. So that's another option you can play with. I'm gonna bring this back to two. And one thing that I love about respaces is one, they're super simple to make. And just in general, you hear this bass sound across a large variety of genres. Now, originally the respace in its purest form was more of a drum and bass type thing. But nowadays you hear variations of this sound across basically every genre you can think of. So like I said, definitely a very versatile bass sound and definitely something worth knowing how to create and how to tweak. So from here, we can actually load it into a mixer and I'll go ahead and actually do that. So we'll route to a free mixer track here. And then you can start doing some more processing on it with various other effects. So you could try adding distortion. You could try adding OTT, you know, some, some various other effects. I mean, you can get as creative as you want with this, but one thing I do want to mention before we wrap up the tutorial is that the issue with this sound is that it's a very stereo bass sound. And you can actually see if, if you noticed on the correlation meter, meter as I'm playing something. I mean, the phase is going left, right, the correlation meter is going back and forth all over the place. And one thing that can potentially mess up your mix is having your bass sounds too stereo, not really in mono. So one thing that we can do to try and kind of make this a little bit more mono compatible, but still retain the, the re-space sound is we can do some mid-side processing. And there are actually a few different ways to do this inside FL Studio, but I think probably the easiest one is just to go into Patcher and there's a patcher preset, which is called uh, mid-side EQ right here. So we can click that, and then we have a side EQ and a mid EQ. So this is our side EQ up here, and this is our mid EQ. So then I can actually take the sides, and I can bring this down so I can make the bass a little bit more mono in the low end. I could potentially do a filter, or I can do a low shelf kind of like this. So first, let's take a listen and kind of a look at the low shelf and we'll see, I'm gonna get rid of this one and then we'll kind of just look at the, the frequency chart here. So let's look at this. So it still sounds pretty good in terms of, you know, retaining the original sort of character and, and sound. But as you can see on the correlation meter, now it's actually staying positive the whole time. So we're definitely getting a little bit more mono compatibility with the sound, which is good. 
One plugin that I love messing with, if you have Serum, you should have the effects version as well. And you can actually experiment with all the different effects that Serum has. Now within FL Studio, you basically have the ability to do all of these sound design techniques. So you don't have to use Serum effects if you don't have it, but this can give you some ideas in terms of stuff that you could add to your bass. So let's try like distortion. So that's something to play with. We could try flangers. We could try phaser. We could of course try a chorus. We've already tried this. Delays. Compressor, try adding some OTT. So hopefully that gives you a few more ideas about some things you can experiment with with this bass sound. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the tutorial here. If you liked it, please be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That'll let you know anytime I release videos in the future. And if you're struggling with anything production related, or if you're brand new to production, you're just confused about stuff, I do offer one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of the video for that if you want to check it out. And I will see you in the next video.